Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Google Play Store on Windows 11 using, of course, the Windows subsystem for Android. In this video, I'm going to show you the whole process, but before doing anything, this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the scripts that A Delta X created and uploaded to GitHub. So a big shout out to him, to this uh, GitHub user that uploaded and gave us all the resources needed for us to be able to install the Google Play Store on um, the Windows subsystem for Android Android on Windows 11. In this video, basically, I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do to install the Google Play Store on Windows 11. But as I've said, this wouldn't be possible if a Delta X wouldn't have created and uploaded these scripts and resources to GitHub. So you'll have his link in the article down below in the description. And here you can see all his stuff and everything. And also every other link and command used in this video will be in the article down below in the description. So let's begin with this video. First of all, of course, we're going to need to meet the minimum requirements for the Windows subsystem for Android and those are to have our region set to US and also have the virtualization for our processor enabled as I've showed you in previous videos to set your region to US just open up the settings type in here region to search for the region settings and in the region settings on country or region make sure you have selected United States also go into the search box type in here Windows features and then click on turn Windows features on or off and make sure hyper V and also virtual Virtual machine platform are enabled. Of course, you're going to have to enable the virtualization for your processor in your BIOS as well, but that you need to do yourself. You can press the BIOS key depending on your motherboard and you will be able to enable the virtualization for your processor in the processor tab. Other things that we're going to need at the beginning is of course the Windows subsystem for Android. Also we're going to need the Windows subsystem for Linux because we're going to use some Linux scripts and commands and also you're going to need 7-zip for this video. So first of all let's download the Windows subsystem for Android. So now you are going to use this link from the official Microsoft Store for the Windows subsystem for Android and we're going to copy that link into to store.rg-adguard.net, the website that I showed you in the previous videos. I'm not going to mention this throughout the whole video, but all the links and all the commands will be in the article down below, so I'm not going to stay and mention every time this thing. You can find all the resources there and also in the GitHub that I showed you at the beginning of the video that belongs to a Delta X. So let's copy this link, paste it in here, and from here where it says RP, select slow, and then click on this check mark. Click on it a few times if it doesn't show you all these links. And from here, download the last link or the link that has 1.2 gigabytes. Click on it to start the download process. If the download doesn't work for you, as it doesn't work in my case, you're going to have also some alternative download links in the article down below. So you can download this from those links as well. Now the download of the Windows subsystem for Android started. And while this is downloading, we're going to download 7-zip. Just go, of course, and download from the link that will be in the article click on download for your Windows version but I'm supposing that you have the x64 bit version let's install it as well install and the installation process is really fast click on close now let's also install the Windows subsystem for Linux so for that we're gonna open up the Microsoft Store and in the search box we're gonna type in here Windows subsystem for Linux and then press enter install this one Windows subsystem for Linux preview and then click on install on user account control click on yes and wait for the download and installation process to be finished the installation is finished now we're also gonna need a Linux distribution for this Windows subsystem for Linux so for that we're gonna search for Ubuntu you can use whatever you want but for this video I'm gonna use Ubuntu 20.04 LTS long time support and then I'm going to click on install to install this Ubuntu distribution as well. Now Ubuntu was also installed. We can exit out from here. Now let's go in the location where we downloaded the Windows subsystem for Android and open it up with 7-zip. I'm just going to open up 7-zip in my computer, click on 7-zip file manager. And in here, I'm just going to right click on the Windows subsystem for Android, basically on that M6 bundle that we've downloaded and then click on copy as path. You can exit out from here and paste the path in your 7-zip, press enter, and you will be basically inside that package. Scroll down and you can also expand the names to see all the names. You are interested in this package, which is for the X64 release nightly. Now we're gonna need to create a new folder into the Windows partition or in the C partition. And this new folder, I'm just gonna click on new folder. We're gonna name it Windows subsystem Android. Now open up the x64 release from the Windows subsystem for Android and from here 
we are going to copy and paste some files from here to this new folder that we've created into the local disk C partition. So make sure to select all the files except the first one and the last one, and also deselect AppX block map and AppX signature and drag and drop these files to that location. So wait for them to be copied. And after that, we're gonna be good to go. If you didn't know how to deselect some files, just hold the control button and deselect certain files from a selection. That is really, really simple. We can exit out from zip and zip now, and we successfully copied those files into the Windows subsystem Android folder. In local disk C, we're gonna create another folder, click on new folder, and this one, we're gonna name it G apps. WSA, basically Google Apps, Windows Subsystem, Android. And now we are going to need to download all the scripts and files from the A Delta X GitHub. Just click on this green button, which says code, and then click on download zip to download the archive. Let's go into downloads where we downloaded this, open up the archive and open up the folder and all these files, extract them into the G Apps WSA folder that we've created before. Just drag and drop and all those files will be copied. After this, we're gonna have to go into the following website, which is opengapps.org. Of course, the link will be in the article down below in the description. From this website, make sure to select x86 or 64 or ARM64, depending on your platform, select Android 11, and also select the Pico variant, and then click on the download button. You are going to be redirected to sourceforge.net. From here, if you your download isn't starting, click on problems downloading and then click on that direct link to download that directly. Go into the downloads folder or wherever you downloaded that, copy this archive and then paste it into local disk C, gapps WSA, go into the hashtag gapps folder and paste the archive here. Now go into the Windows subsystem Android folder and from this location, we're going to have to copy four files and the four files are these ones, basically these images, vendor system underscore EXT system and also the product disk image. Control C to copy them and then go into the G apps WSA folder and then go into the hashtag images folder and then paste those files here. After you copied those files, just open up the Ubuntu distribution that we've installed for the Windows subsystem for Linux. Basically, when you first open it up, it will start installing and after it is installed, you can simply launch this by opening up the Windows subsystem for Linux. It will take a few minutes, so just wait a bit. Now you're gonna have to enter a new Unix username. For example, I'm gonna type in here Emmy and and then a new password, press enter. As you can see, you cannot see the password for security reasons. Just enter your password and make sure you remember it. And now we are successfully using the Ubuntu distribution using the Windows subsystem for Linux. You're gonna have to type in here sudo su to have administrative privileges and then press enter. Of course, you're gonna have to enter the password, press enter again. And now you're gonna have to change the directory to the gapps.wsa folder. So for that, we're just gonna type cd in two points in order to see where we are at now. Type ls to see the list of files. Type cd two points again and then ls. And type these until you see this list of files. And then you're gonna have to go into mnt. Type cd mnt slash ls again to see where we are at. And then c, type in here cdc slash ls again to see all the files. And from here, you can see the gapps.wsa folder. Type in here cd apps.wsa and then slash, and we are now in that location. You can also simply use this CD, MNT, C, G apps, WSA, but I recommend you do all the process because maybe in your case, some of the locations are different. Now we're gonna have to install LZIP and unzip. So for that, we're gonna use the command apt install LZIP unzip and then press enter. When you run this command, if you receive this error package, lzip has no installation candidate, you have to basically type the following command, sudo apt-get update and then press enter, wait for a bit. Basically the whole distribution will be updated. All these commands will be in the article down below in the description. You can copy and paste those commands from there, so don't worry. You can also go into the GitHub of A Delta X if you want. He also has a list of commands that he used there. And after this, type again apt install lzip unzip. And this time the command should run successfully and those two tools will be installed. The next command that we're gonna run is apt install dos to Unix. We also need this, press enter. A thing 
thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video is that if you already had the Windows subsystem for Android installed, you should uninstall it because some things could not work if you do this from a previous installation. So just uninstall it and follow the steps from the beginning of this video. And now we're going to have to run five different commands. Type in here DOS to Unix, then point slash apply dot sh, then DOS to Unix point slash extend underscore and underscore mount underscore images dot sh, basically the script, then DOS to Unix extract underscore g apps underscore pico dot sh, and then press enter, DOS to Unix space point slash unmount underscore images dot sh, and then press enter, and the last command should be dos to unix point slash variables dot sh and then press enter. Now we're gonna run point slash extract underscore g apps underscore pico dot sh basically until now we've extracted all those images and scripts and now we are running them press enter into this command wait for a bit it will unzip open g apps basically open g apps is the google play store or the google apps the process could take up to five minutes i don't know depending on your system so just wait patiently for the process to be finished when the process is finished you should see this message g apps folder ready now we're gonna run the next command which is point slash extend underscore end underscore mount underscore images dot sh and then press enter and you should see this message images mount and now just type in point slash apply dot sh and then press enter and this is basically the whole process that we have to do for now in the ubuntu distribution and when it says apply completed you can also unmount those images point slash unmount underscore images dot sh to unmount those images and you should receive the following message unmounting completed now go into the hashtag images folder from the gapps wsa folder and then here copy these images because we've changed these images basically and go and paste them into the windows subsystem for android Control v and replace the files in the destination if you copy them if you cut them you won't need to replace them and now we basically replaced those files because we've changed them in order for us to be able to install that google play store what we're gonna have to do next go again into the g apps wsa folder go into the misc folder copy the kernel from here and go into the windows subsystem android folder tools rename the existing kernel file to something else because we don't want to rewrite it so we're just gonna press f2 and type in here kernel one or something like that and then paste that kernel that we've copied from the g apps wsa folder after this we're gonna have to open up the windows powershell as administrator so just type windows powershell right click on windows powershell and then click on run as administrator and on user account control click on yes in the windows powershell you're gonna have to copy and paste the following command add dash app x package space dash register and then go into the windows subsystem android folder and locate the apex manifest file right click on it and then click on copy as path and go into the powershell right click to copy the path and then press enter if you receive the following error and deployment is failed that is because you don't have the windows developer mode enabled so for that just open up the settings app go in here and search for developer settings click on developer settings and then turn on install apps from any source including loose files and when it asks you turn on developer mode click on yes and then you can exit out from settings press the up arrow to copy the command again and then press enter and now the installation should be completed and successful after this you can minimize all these windows and you can open up the windows subsystem for android because it was just installed click on it make sure to enable the developer mode and you can click on manage developer settings and uncheck share my diagnostic data and then click on continue to open up the windows subsystem system for android click on allow access and this process be patient because this can also take up to five minutes if you have a uh, lower end pc and now once the windows subsystem for android is opened up you can close it you can minimize the windows subsystem for android app and search for the google play store and as you can see you have the google play store here click on it to open it and as you can see we successfully installed the google play store now if you click on sign in it could happen that the sign in option would not work so i'm going to show you a fix for that also as you can see in my case the sign in button works but if your sign in button doesn't work 
follow the next steps. Go into the link down below in the article that was also provided by a Delta X from Mediafire. Basically, we have an ADB kit with some needed files for this to work. Click on download to download these files. In local disk C, you can create a new folder called ADB kit as I've done so myself and then go into the downloads folder, open up the archive and extract those files into the ADB kit folder. Select all the files, drag and drop them there. In this location, right click and then click on open in Windows terminal. Here in the Windows terminal or Windows PowerShell, type in point backslash adb.exe, connect, and then go into the Windows subsystem for Android, click on refresh to get the IP address next to IP address, and then use this IP address in PowerShell 127.0.0.158586. And then six, press enter. If it says fail to authenticate, basically this is only a bug, run the command again, and it will say that it is already connected, so you have no issues. Now type the following command, point backslash adb.exe, and then shell, press enter, type in su to become the root, and then set E N force zero and then press enter. Now you are all good to go. You were a Google Play Store should work, but the last step would be to restore that kernel file from the Windows Subsystem Android folder, go into the tools, and then basically you were kernel one or that kernel that you've renamed is the main one. Rename this one, for example, kernel underscore v2, and then rename kernel one to kernel and you should be good to go. Now open up the Google Play Store, click on Play Store, and you should be able to log in to the Google Play Store and install any app that you want from the Google Play Store. I'm gonna log into my account as well. And now, as you can see, I am successfully logged into the Play Store. So uh, you can install any app that you want, any app that you would normally install on your phone. Now let's install an app, for example, from the games category. Let's install, for example, 8-Ball Pool click on it and then install. As you can see, you also receive notifications from Windows, which is pretty cool with regarding the process of installation and all that. Now it is installing and we can now click on play. Let's go and play the app and you will see that the app will be opened up in a separate window and we can play the game with no issues. As you can see, the game works. You can play with no issues. This is really, really cool. So let's just exit out from here. This is the full video of how to install the Google Play Store. As I've said, this is possible because a Delta X uploaded all the necessary files and resources and scripts to his GitHub. So a big shout out to him. All his links and all the resources will be in the article down below in the description. If this video was useful, don't forget to leave a like down below and also subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated. If you have any questions or issues, don't forget to leave them down below in the comments and I will happily answer to you. I was Emmanuel from tech based. Until next time, have a nice day.